I've seen you drunk. That's a good thing. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I don't think you that necessarily is the thing to do when you drink. It's not to really to get drunk unless you're like 20 something. I was going to say, 20s, I, com- I completely like, oh, disagree. We're just going to get fucking wasted. <laughs> this motherfucker right here, though. See, we've known each other for a long time, so I got even deeper stories about this guy right here. I want to hit every yeah, we single one. We went to college together. We played on the same football. We. Yo, you talk about fucked up. (laughs) Uh, This motherfucker be drunk during practice. Oh, that's see, that's why we get along so well. This motherfucker be two eleven in. He wasn't fucked up, but you could smell. Oh yeah, the alcohol. We'd be like in the huddle and be like, (sighs) (laughs) you know that that morning, like, oh, you've been drinking last night. Like, yeah, let me just sweat it out real quick. Oh, when the play is coming to you. Wait, um, remind me again, because I think we just cold open it. Yeah, that's should we just we cold do. open? Yeah, that, we're live yeah. by the way. This is yeah. dope. Like, let's. let's like that. That's not even. Fu- yeah, into just it. straight into it. Like, come town, they do that as well, and I love Spit it. On it go, yeah, go right in. <laughs> straight in, bareback oh. it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is how porn begins. Oh. I knew this would happen when I moved here. <laughs> Wait, so remind me again, which college do you guys go to? San Jose State University. Right, and so there's a big drinking culture I've noticed amongst the California schools versus yes. a lot of the others that's far more aligned with like the British and Korean approach to drinking, mm-hmm. which is basically just like straight alcoholism. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when we were at San Jose State, we didn't know it at the time, but you know, after graduating, you run into people who went to school with us or were in the area at other colleges. They always came to San Jose State to party. It was like, yeah, San Jose State is the party school. <laughs> and like, we weren't really like thinking it at the moment, but like, we party the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, you got Stanford right next door mm-hmm. and uh, Cal up the street. Right. And um, Santa Clara, the, which Santa is, these Clara. are all like really prestigious, really good schools education wise. And we, Cruz. you Santa oh, Cruz, yeah, you see, Banana Slugs. Yeah. You know, so we were like the blue collar. You know, school. The commuter that, school. Yeah, the commuter school. So we're like, ah, psh. but we, you know, still great, you know, education, mm-hmm. you know, straight, uh, great uh, um, computer science program. Um, Ned. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but it was, it was like the hub, and we literally were like the blue collar, like cool kids. You know, we mm. went in there, we would beat up Stanford when we played them, <laughs> um, and we would go Never on there. to Stanford, by the way, when I was there. <laughs> We go on their campus and like you know steal their chicks and stuff. So it was it was fun times, but we definitely got wasted a lot. It was you know. What were your guys' go-to drinks? Ooh, that was a little, uh, little, little two eleven still reserved when we was drinking oh beers. Oh man, had to go hard. Wait, what is this? I don't it's, think I've heard of this. This is, the, this yeah. is like the it's, it's like, like a cheap man's beer. Yeah, it's a cheap beer. Cheap beer, but it's like bottom barrel. Super super <laughs> strong. Yeah. Yeah, and if you you know, being on a college budget, you only had a few dollars, you had to make it make it work. I was the gonna tall say. Cans, it's like the tall cans, yeah, but yeah. it's like the malt, yep. malt liquor. It's like the oh. but yeah, bottom barrel. If, if it really wasn't thick. that yeah, if it wasn't that, we were definitely drinking brandy. Which is ugh. That's, Ew, we right. use that as medicine in Britain. Like yeah. in the winter, you drink brandy to like stay healthy through the cold. So for, first of all, no <laughs> one's experience as an experienced drinker in college, right? So you just kinda went on budget. And you experimented <laughs> until you threw up and you were like, okay, we don't drink that anymore. I don't drink Southern Comfort ever again oh. in my oh, life. Man. Oh, Southern yes. Comfort and lemonade. I think that's the only right. time I it nearly, so it's like candy. Oh my but God. then you wake up in a bin and you're like, how did exactly. I end up here? It's like, that oh. Works. Bacardi yeah. Limon was hot when we were in college. Oh. Bacardi <laughs> Limon. That was Bacardi the Limon was the like go-to. <laughs> because the girls like the Bacardi Limon. Exactly. So put all the girls on the Bacardi Limon, and you that's like uh, seltzer. What, what do they drink now? Seltzer beer or whatever. It's oh like yeah. yeah, like uh, w- White Claw. Yeah, white, yeah, 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 like white and, t- and uh, <laughs> Trulies. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's that was yeah. Bacardi Limon. Even though Bacardi Limon was actually hard liquor. Mm-hmm. You know, see, look, the cat likes to get <laughs> tipsy a little bit. Wonky. <laughs> yeah, he's a. I mean, he loves it. You can't you can't leave him alone with anything. Don't let him around the weed. He'll Can try and eat it as well. Uh, that oh yeah, oh, sorry, the sorry. Sorry. No, sorry. We always do this. We always have one thing like oh, yeah. short, um, and I guess today it'll be the lighter. But uh, yeah, I guess like drinking culture in the states versus Britain. So we get a lot of our drinking out of the way before we turn eighteen in the UK because there's oh. like fuck all else to do. Nice. But 
like our drinks everything's budget anyway so like you're looking right. at like a dollar for a single dollar 50 for doubles like standard across like they have to have the measures in the bars because people die from alcoholism Holy all crap. the time like fall over bang their head get into a fight like i saw in a fray a week so i'm assuming like there was less of the violence more of like the fun of college it was both <laughs> it was both there were some violent moments <laughs> Violently I mean, throwing up, I think, is yeah, like the kind of what really you're like, for. You know, you're not like it, you sometimes at the club, like you know, people get a little rowdy. But yeah, but I mean, come on, you gotta. We we were in college and we had a mission to accomplish, right? We were <laughs> we were playing football. You had to stay mm-hmm. eligible. You couldn't afford to get in trouble. Right? People got in trouble a little bit, but like that wasn't like really your main focus. Mm-hmm. Every now and then, somebody from off campus would come in. You might have to put hands on them real quick, run them about the neighborhood, <laughs> but that's what it was. You know, we protected, we protected the land. But but you Fucking see, love it. you see the space on the top of your shelves right oh, here. Oh yeah, yeah. That would be trouble. filled with bottles. <laughs> we would try to figure out how yeah. many bottles so, we give. We would try to stack as many. Like this was an accomplishment. Like, oh, all oh, those were definitely was we do all those. You know. So this one, this set, my senior year. So we lived in these apartments that were paid for by the school, like mm-hmm. that were on campus, but kind of off campus a little bit. We were right by the stadium. And so, yeah, we were, we were, we were it was free for us. You're yeah. so spoiled. And so this one year they attempted to move this, you know, to kind of tone down like the activity that was going on. They attempted to move this kid who played golf. He was fresh to the campus. Him and his father took a tour and they brought him to my apartment and <laughs> Like Carlos said, that whole top shelf was just full of alcohol bottles. You Imagine know. this kid, this white kid, <laughs> yeah. coming into with his father, with his dad, right? They're coming into this college campus, very nice. He's mm-hmm. like, "Oh, we're gonna play golf," <laughs> and all of a sudden, you got like, and we was we and his spot was the hangout spot. I lived across the street, but mm-hmm. we would just hang out over there. And you got like five, six grown ass athlete black dudes shirts off mm. in Always. there drinking that sounds like a fucking dream come true as far <laughs> as i'm concerned it was comes for in, the girl yeah <laughs> it was for the girl. but he comes in like it's the projects and we are like yo what's up and he's like oh my god him and his dad are like we you're not living yeah, with these we're dudes. out of here uh, <laughs> like we're no. out of here so we pay for it the next day in yeah, practice we, oh my god like and because our apartment was called uh our the name uh well excuse me our apartment number was one two three so that just kind of led to all of the mm-hmm. you know it, club it just kind of spoke yeah, club one two three it was just like all the mischief right and so yeah you glad it wasn't we, mine I was one ten yeah he was one ten <laughs> the players then <laughs> <laughs> but no it that was, was an after after party yeah it, it was it was it was fun it was a good time but yeah we paid for it and practiced the next day ran a whole bunch and like nobody could get mad you know because all of the focus was definitely on me. Because I was the person that the kid's father met when he walked over there. <laughs> but you know what? I had love by everybody on the team, and everybody on the team has come through there and contributed to putting bottles up on that shit. Yeah. Nah. So nobody That's can say shit. That's true fucking teamwork right there. Yeah, no, we would, uh, we would even, um, <coughs> we would even have barbecues. I mean, it was, it I was had love. The biggest barbecues on campus. Oh shit! It was fun. <laughs> oh shit! And we would like charge like five dollars. Uh, uh, we would have we maybe get a keg or something. We just charge for the cup. Hey you guys, we was entrepreneurs the right way, man. Yeah. yeah, it was good. And made money on top of that. Yeah, and I was cutting hair. I, we were entrepreneurs. Like, and I had the weed plug before it was uh. legal up there. Like, cats would come to my room to smoke, to get smoke and get a haircut. It was like a one stop shop. Mm-hmm. And I was getting. Like boxes of of swishers like that, and just and just like you know you you would just come and you just get everything you need. You get right. a haircut, a little edge up, right. get some trees, you know, get some wisdom. We was you know in there mentoring, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't know what the statute of limitations is on this, and I'm not supposed to go into too much detail with no, my immigration definitely. status. I'm just gonna <coughs> cough up a lung again today. Um, but yeah, my, it's funny you mentioned cutting hair. One of the things that I did in university was I would not quite the same. I would shave all the guys backs if they had (laughs) dates. So the guys would come over, we'd smoke, obviously, because like what else is there to do when it's dark outside and raining by three o'clock every fucking day. (laughs) And they'd be like, Hey, I've got a Tinder date tonight. Like right when Tinder came out, they're like, what do I do about my shoulders? And I'm like, I got you fam. (laughs) 
and that was yeah that so was nice. like that my was hustle that was one of my side hustles How, what did you yeah. charge for that usually it would be like bring me like a box of the we call it the nos balloons i guess they call it whippets oh, out yeah, here yeah, like, i'd be like oh yeah that's good those are good yeah so i'd either i haven't done them in years i really miss them oh they so were they were so like black fun. market shit like you were like yeah, oh, let me yeah. Get shit i can't really yeah. buy you yeah, yeah you know not. like i don't know just like bring me something your mother made you kind of thing <laughs> like maybe a nice pie or something yeah. but uh yeah that was that was my side hustle but wait wait so you guys both played professional I know that Ron played professional football. Did you go on to play no. uh, like post college? I didn't. I, I was on like the practice squad for the Sabre Cats, which is like the lowest version of football <laughs> you can get into. Oh. Um, and then I was on the practice squad of the lowest version of football you can get into. So, so no. you guys saved your bodies then? Yeah, I was I really mean, into. Maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, I actually yeah I blew my knee in college too. Oh shit! Um, Jesus. And that was that was pretty devastating and that looking back on it it was like damn like just to get a just to get an education i had to kind of give up a lot of i mean as much as we partied it wasn't like regular students right regular students still had to go to class mm -hmm. and they just partied and they just woke up with a hangover mm -hmm. and went to class whereas we were like you know kind of on a regiment and had to be mm. you know bashing our heads yeah, we, had, we had obligations yeah, yeah. we're we on scholarship sacrificing yeah. your bodies you get a scholarship, but not getting paid for sacrificing. Or the video games that we were on while we we're playing, like ourselves at on the video games. Like, how come I'm not getting the cut of that? Jesus yeah. fuck! Yeah, I mean, Wait, what? Yeah, I mean, I'm not the into video games. That are so being you gotta sold on our, you know what I mean? Like, we're not getting the cut of any of that. And we're kids, right? So we're just like, oh, this is fun. We're getting flown everywhere, and we're doing all these things, and. You know, just for but that's just free tuition, how it is, though. But that's how it is. Yeah, that's how it is. So I mean, those were the rules that were set a long time before we got there. Mm -hmm. And so I mean, you didn't look at it from that perspective, right? No. Until yeah. like later. You know, yeah, later when you know more and more high school kids, you know, in basketball started, you know, coming from high school going straight to the pros, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the conversation of you know being in college and then all of you know just just I think pretty much. The funny, let me say this really quick. So when we were in college, I got my first email address, right? So the internet had really just took right. off when we was in college. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of funny. I'm kind of dating myself right now. But <laughs> what year what was that? Like, Tell us the date, Ron. Break us back yeah, in time. Hustle. What was going on? What were people guys? wearing? Like? I'm 42. 42. Yeah, I'm 42. I just turned 40. Yo, 40. fuck both of you guys and your skin. It's so beautiful. I'm so old. Ugh. It's not fair. But, you, look you know, it was just... So sweet. Yes. I'm already getting wrinkles. You guys like couldn't have one between you. No. This is like the joy of like being this pasty in this sunlight. Wow. But um, yeah, carry on. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's kind of my party <laughs> trick. I'll just cut you off and then everything I say is nowhere near as interesting. But um wait, so you guys are forty two, so you get your first email address when you're in college. Right. But that was just because everybody was getting email addresses. I don't think I actually used my email address until maybe five years after college. That's yeah. how new the internet was. Right. The only time you got on the internet was to Google something. And Google likes some information to cheat on your paper. Mm. Right. Okay, so this is something we talk about a lot on the show. And it's a shame that Lanny's not here because I think he speaks to it far more eloquently than I can. But um, there's this idea, right? Because... I grew up without a computer just purely because we couldn't afford one until at least the mid 2000s, I believe. <coughs> and right. everything seemed far less complicated before the internet came out. Yeah. And now I see, like we see obviously all day every day, the kind of like mental health decline yeah. that goes hand in hand with the internet. Yeah. But I know like certainly even just for the purposes of this, we wouldn't have a career if it weren't for the internet. That too. Like, sure. in terms of your, like, day-to-day, -day, do you find that you like having the use of the internet, or do you reminisce of the days prior to having to deal with that shit? I mean, I think it goes hand-in-hand. Hand. Everything just moves so fast now, you know, right. so you have to have the internet. Right. If you're not on the internet, then, like, you're fucking, you're losing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I yeah. think, yeah. I think I'm, I feel... <clears throat> a little in an advantage i feel i'm in an advantage because i've experienced life before it mm. Mm. and i can interact with people better than the kid who grew up with 
for social, sure social media because sure. i can read different this is like we were talking about before we got on the podcast like mm-hmm. a smell uh, uh this and that those things you can't get through digital right mm-hmm. and the touch and how i can read your nuances and those things that we learned as kids because just innately just be, through osmosis you know i can read how someone's feeling mm-hmm. and have an emotional intelligence mm-hmm. because i was i was there before i had to read through but kids that have digital senses too right they can look at your your photo and read so many different nuances through that better than i can too you see what i'm saying so there's as a human being because mm-hmm. i learned at a different era but i can learn the digital that they can't learn they have to learn differently the the human element right. too right that's so oh my god that that actually just fried my brain a little bit yeah. i had never even thought about it in those terms because you're so right like you try to communicate with kids these days and it's so hard to get them to yeah grow that kind of emotional intelligence that yeah. i guess comes hand in hand with you know having social interactions not through a screen and then like all these like i work with a lot of students who are good online schools Mm. and they completely miss the college experience Mm -hmm. and you can hear it in their voice a lot of them like when you get on a call with them it's just like oh wow this is just a job for you Mm -hmm. like i remember when i was in university it was like hands down like i think to this day it was probably the best three years of my life like could not fault it i can't remember half of it and yet it was still that incredible great. it was great yeah it was a, the growing experience that human being outside of your little home uh parent bubble mm-hmm. you know or whatever adult uh your next adult life because you're still a kid really mm-hmm. you know because i think about it i was a kid you know i didn't know in college sh- yeah i didn't know yeah, no- sure. even though i was experienced even i grew up in a city I was faster, smarter than, you know, than other kids. And I still was like, damn, I'm a kid. Now, now I'm a, a full grown adult. I have a child. I have a wife. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but, like, so for me back then, you couldn't tell me shit. But you, but, but I was, <laughs> I was a smart ass. Like I was a smart a young adult. You know? Yeah, I was definitely an adult. So I was, I'm, I grew up the oldest of eight. So Shit. I had big responsibility on my hands since a young and I was always even around amongst all of our circle of friends and stuff. And even in college, I always kind of play like the big homie role. Big yeah, homies well. kind of just, you know, who big homie is, right? Come to you for information, come to you for a couple dollars, right. whatever the case is. I've always been big homie because I've always played that role. That was my role growing up. So for me being in college I, it was kind of weird to see people who didn't know how to wash their clothes and like little, little <laughs> that shit was like that. funny like, yo that's right? like we've been washing clothes since i was six like mm-hmm. you wash your own clothes <laughs> but you know yeah. i'm good there was a there was that right you know what i mean like so many coming to school and i saw how how adva- like i was glad i grew up the way i grew up mm-hmm. just because you know, there were so many people like that. Just simple things. Like, right. I didn't know. You, you ain't supposed to put the red <laughs> with the whites. What are you doing? Just, everything's going to come out pink. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Like, man. You know. This is probably why you were the center of, like, all of the fun and partying and trouble, though. As well, like, you're that kind of responsible. Yeah. The kind of patriarch that everyone needs. Yes. You know, right. the I one would, who's going to. Yeah. You know, when the parties would get broken up, I would go outside, talk, talk to, to the, the cops. cops. Uh, yes, that's my job. I'll go talk to the cops. Look, this is yeah. what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> drunk as fuck, but you know, birthday, some, for some reason, you know. they still have respect for the conversation <laughs> we're having. Yeah. Like, okay, just, you know, keep it your little, Yeah, everybody outside has to go. Whoever stays inside, they can stay inside. Mm-hmm. And that was normally how it went down. But, like, for sure, for sure, we're going to get a visit. Uh, <laughs> Every, time. Every time. I mean, I mean I, this is pre social media right mm-hmm. pre-camera smartphone right this is right at that where everybody still had like the blackberry you know this was no, the, the blackberry wasn't even out dude like this I got was, my first oh yeah you're right in college this like, was like oh so the big o's yeah. big o <laughs> big o first of all who was another select yeah. he he's a a, a a a famous guy actor i'll let you find out he's actually known as big o and a lot of tv yeah. stuff but 
He's on Ballers. But he was a hustler. I mean, he sold us a bunch of shit. I had my first hustler, DVD player bro. from he Big sold O. Me, he sold me my three-way pager. I had the Skytel three-way yep. pager. Oh, Skytel's. So like, Big O sold me my first little camera phone. Oh, yeah. the He, he actually Big got o me my everything. first. And, and because I'm in the film Rolex. and TV space. So Big O gave me a fake Rolex. <laughs> and I had it for years. It was a good years fake, of though. good fake. It still kind of it. Ha, it didn't tick tick tick, but it was like a smooth tick 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 tick. Like, I was like, oh, it's kind of smooth, you know. It was kinetic and everything. It was it was. I mean, but you know, we we were around some really cool guys and girls. Is it your show? What? Yeah, you're like moderating the whole show right now. I'm sorry. No, I, no, no, no. this is fucking great. We can just sit. And, are you and kidding me? This, this is this, what we, we do for a living. I have to do shit. This, this is, my, is fucking he's my great. Friend. Yeah, yeah. I've known him for 22 years. I'm talking. We can shit. edit this though. No, it's okay. <laughs> we don't. We don't want to do it. <laughs> this is good chemistry right here. Yeah. <laughs> so for the for the listeners or the viewers, uh, we got Carlos right yeah. here in the middle. Wait, Carlos, what's your full name? Carlos Custis. Carlos J. Custis. Mm-hmm. I love it. Beautiful. Ron Brandon. Ron, Ron Brandon. Brandon. Yeah, just outstanding. So. Ron Brandon. Yes, sir. We're super spoiled <laughs> this weekend. This is yeah. this is a fucking treat. This is a pleasure. Yeah, this is like I finish work usually around this time on yeah. Saturdays, and I want to go like do like a little horse suicide, which is when you bang your head against the wall <laughs> until you fucking die because it's like the fucking worst. And um, I woke up this morning and I was just like, oh, it's gonna be a really chill afternoon. I'm not gonna have to do shit. So yeah. thank you. You've really facilitated. Yeah, but wait, so welcome. how have you guys stayed in touch post college? So like, there's no internet to begin with. So well, I mean, <coughs> it wasn't that prehistoric, right? You know, yeah. you did you did have you know dial up phones. Yeah. You know, right. somebody you no know, rotary. You, yeah, no. Ro- I mean, there was maybe, some. In the princi- <laughs> maybe in the teacher's office. <laughs> I was saying that my parents <laughs> in had prison, a maybe. rotary in prison, maybe. <laughs> But no, just I mean, honestly, like you, you, you know, I'm not friends with everybody from college, right. still, right? But Carlos and I, obviously, you know, we just had uh, our our major in school was radio, television, film, so we came up through the radio, television, mm. film, yeah. uh, program, That's San Jose so State, right? And so, you know, we were always going to be in communications. We were actually filming a whole lot of our activity in college, which is just the most ratchet TV you would ever see. <laughs> Tales of a but, player. Yeah. Before ratchet was ratchet. We was like fucking before like, YouTube. Like yeah. it was we were like a few like five years <laughs> before YouTube really. Actually, uh, we were probably 10 years before 10, YouTube where, yeah. where mm-hmm. what should have been. Right. <laughs> but like yeah, but you, really, YouTube came out like, oh, five. But it really if. You know, we were already out of school by 05. It was like college. We were graduating at that. Yeah. You know, and, but if, if, you know, luckily it actually wasn't because there were some incriminating things in there. <laughs> some of those videos. I don't know where that box of mini DV, DVs are. This is when, like, you get a phone call next Monday morning just being like, right. so guys, I hear you did a podcast this weekend <laughs> and, um, <laughs> right. No, Everything surface. Uh, <laughs> right. We found those tapes. Yeah. <laughs> we found the tapes. <laughs> the tapes that we're talking about, here they are, right? Uh, you know, it, it was R. Kelly was on there. Uh, <laughs> Everybody was on. Bill Cosby was on there. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> it's fucked up. Eddie. I love it. it was me. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I keep checking my yeah. phone like I got somewhere to go. Like, don't, yeah, don't pay any attention to that. <laughs> and by the way, you saw those two hits that I took. I'm completely high right now. I could see in your it eyes. That's it's it amazing. Like, wait, like, wait. Is it, me? Is it I'm disappointing. Like, what's, where's the mix? No, what? I think it's really endearing because <laughs> I'm pretty fucking high too. Yeah. Um, and I often like I don't like. It's only really when we go away that I drink. So, yeah. This is, uh, like I said, it was going to be a chill Sunday. But I was going to say, the last time we went out for lunch, you were drinking, we we were drinking Aperol Spritz. Aperol Spritz, back to back to back. Yeah, that was like, I I left, (laughs) and it wasn't until I think I got in the Uber, I was like, oh shit, am I going to have to pull over to throw up on the freeway again? (laughs) It was like one of those. And uh, that's kind of a metric for us. So Danny and I, um, so Danny's cousin, Lanny, who's also on the show, Mm Uh, the first night out where I met Danny, I showed up at about 1030 in K town and I was already drunk. So I was kind of nervous. So I had a few drinks before we left Mm, or I left here. Sorry. I'll give that to you. What's the karaoke spot in K town? Oh, we, we, we actually have the karaoke spot. We, we have like this screen at Lanny's place. (laughs) So 
Lanny's, yeah. Lanny Spot got a whole karaoke machine. Oh, yeah. No yeah. It's fucking yeah. so. <laughs> you can try to do something over here, too. Mm hmm. Uh, mm hmm. Right? We got a big screen that I don't. But he got the, yeah. the sound, uh, the phones oh, all yeah. over. So you can't hear anything outside. You could belt it if you want. Oh, uh, yeah, scream. There you yeah, go. yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, there's a there's a lot of uh, karaoke spots. I don't know yeah. if they're open right now. Yeah. I think no, they're closed. I, I, I know imagine. a lot of uh, underground like spots are still operating. Yeah. Um, with hostesses and shit like that. But, yeah. Um, That's exactly the one we want. Yeah. Right. We need that. <laughs> we need that underground. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Like girls come and you pick yeah. which one you want. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. a lot of those. Classic so, LA oh. night out. <laughs> oh, those karaoke spots. Yeah. I, yeah. You, oh. you weren't Just hip. some like mild I human didn't trafficking. Know, <laughs> I didn't even know what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. I need some. Oh, wait, you don't? You guys don't know about these? I know about them. So I, it's I like, didn't. It's like karaoke until, with an X. Like so. Well, this is like okay. So actually, the first night out on Lanny's birthday. We're in, it's like four, five, six o'clock in the morning and we're in this karaoke bar. Just, ugh, you know, it's exactly as you're imagining. Just, ugh. Like um, I, I might as well be somewhere. In it was like a fucking dungeon. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, this is where it's I die, uh, but this is fucking great. It's, I don't want to say the name because I don't want to yeah. get him in trouble, but there's, there's a couple spots. Like there's one where it's, it's below an apartment complex. Nice. And, it's, and there's no sign. There's yeah. no sign. It's just a, a black gate, uh-huh. no lights, and you go straight down, and there's a security guard, another black door. Yeah. And you barely see the guy, and then he opens the door, checks your ID, and you go in, and it's a full-on, like, luxurious karaoke like club type of vibe. Good lord. Yeah, right? that that was not where we were at. Yeah. That sounds fucking lit. Yeah. Right. Maybe yeah, maybe luxurious. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Um and then you know they have different rooms and you know they have legit setups. Yeah. Um it's very quiet and then yeah, they just tell they just tell you, "Do you want girls?" and they bring girls and like a van comes. Yeah. And <laughs> all of them come out and yeah. you pick and the rest leave. The rest leave. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. It's, it's, America, it's ladies enough. and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Wow, it's fucking love we, we it. We should do that. We, we should, should do that. Do uh, that. Well, I'll, I'll find out if if some places are open, and then once you guys come back <coughs> down, or yeah, when you come back down, we should all go. I'm we should go down. traffic yeah. people. <coughs> wow, can't wait. So this is pretty much why we have the karaoke bar at Lanny's place now. <laughs> but it's um, it <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. If we had gone to a place like that, I feel like I would have a completely different first impression mm. of Lanny's friends and life. Mm. No, the place we were at was like less than a quarter of the size of this room, mm. which is very small. Um, and it was kind of like one of those places where if the lights came up, it you could easily shoot a sequel of Hostel kind of thing. <laughs> like, <clears throat> so we're sat there and I'm kind of like, oh yeah, everyone's singing. Like, this is fucking great. I'm fucking so fucking drunk. I cannot believe I'm still awake. Um, this is so much fun. I'm definitely a teen again. And then like, this girl walks in and for a split second, I just have this like flashback. You know, you say smells, like they right. can just take you back. Image, like they, that kind of emotional context right you can just be straight transported right. back and i spent a lot of my time even well i guess like in college doing um well my mom my mom was like oh you should do modeling and i was just mm. like money <laughs> yes and so i just had this like flashback to when i was like suddenly like oh this is not actually like something you people really make money at most right. people end up as prostitutes in this line of work this girl like walks in and i was just like oh yeah that's like it was like it was some happening. girl that I had known from like the runway kind of you thing. And struggle. I was just like, oh, we've aged. Mm. And I was like, suddenly I like realized where I was. And I was just like, yeah, fuck it. This is fine. This is kind of yeah. cool. I think the one yeah. you went to was a bad one. There's there's a few good ones. Even, I mean, it's not even really frowned upon in Koreatown anymore. Yeah. There's, um, there's another spot near my house where it's all glass. Really? All glass doors. Only thing is it's tinted. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's and it's advertised. It, it says at you know, street level. Yeah, at street level. Oh. It's it's on a main street. Wow. And you see the karaoke <coughs> bar sign, and then you just go in, and you know they have glass yeah. door entrance. They have glass door rooms. It's just tinted, and then you know th- this place. You gotta you gotta kind of know the person and be yeah. like, hey, you know, can we get some girls? <laughs> and then they all come in. Yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of you know sweet though. Sorry. Oh, sorry. The yeah. one in the mall. Mm-hmm. You know, you gotta pass through that 
through the mall to get to the karaoke spot. You been to that one? In Koreatown? Yeah. I think I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the one that I've been to. Mm. Got it. It was great. Yeah, it was there's, great. There's, there's so many. Even yesterday, last night, I was uh, I was out at a bar. Um, you know, all, all restaurants and bars are now outdoor seating. Right. I love Koreatown. it. And so I was drinking, and then in the corner, there's a there's a laundromat. Mm. And then, but then, I keep seeing vans and vans of girls pulling up. Hilarious! It's, it's a it's a busy ass bar too. It's full. <laughs> there's like maybe hundred people sitting in the parking lot. But then we just constantly see vans and vans pulling up and going to the fucking back of the laundromat. And I'm whole, doing my laundry yeah. in the wrong place. And then I found out, yeah, there's a, yeah. There's a karaoke bar in the good back. Lord. Yeah. Oh, oh Lord. my God. Yeah. But then all the women are fucking gorgeous. And yeah. you know Yo, what? I got to go. Where's the laundry? I got to go. <laughs> I was I'll like, we got laundry the at the house. Why are you leaving? Well, I got to do laundry at the <laughs> other. We got laundry in the house, though. <laughs> She's going to be crazy. Oh I was going to say, it's going to be another thing like Monday morning, like on the news, just like a laundromat was raided and found. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's like, that's something that I feel like, and I'm probably wrong about this. I'm sure this happens in like every major city and I'm just like not very cool. But like, I feel like that's something that's so unique to Los Angeles and so normalized. Yeah. And I kind of, yeah, like, we didn't I do don't it. know. We didn't create it. <clears throat> and that's the thing. It's like, you know, all these evils that are in the world, you know, we, you know, all the evils that were put upon, you know, every person like we, we I don't have the plane bringing the drugs and the girls and, the, you know, what I'm saying like all these evils are already existing mm-hmm. and they're spending all this money, you know, uh, you know, pulling people over for bad tags and a little bit of weed or something and then not focusing their attention on bigger you know the the root of it instead of mm. just taking care of the symptoms because well, they don't make money from it yeah like I mean, that's, that's, that's the real yeah. trickle down economy it's like all you have to do is like peel back the hood of and it's not just america right like Everybody, i mean we're, like know. america's pretty bad for it like britain's really fucking bad for it like you just peel back the hood and like all the trickle down economics really comes from is like fucking arms drugs people yeah that's it yeah that's yeah. pretty much it i'm probably forgetting another major one off the back I of mean, my head you know, every country's doing it you know? like fucking at everyone some level, at some level everybody's guilty of all the evils you know we're we're human you right. know and you give somebody the the power to do it they're gonna do you know hey let's talk about weed i was yeah. about to say so one of the things that we really you. try to do Super like weed <laughs> so me being a fucking nerd i just kind of got to a point where all of the data that I'm exposed to in my work shows that if people literally just sat down and had conversations about anything but politics, Mm. we all get along just fucking fine. Mm. And so, yeah, let's uh, let's stop talking about the evils of the world. Start talking about some fun stuff. Let's talk (laughs) about weed because you're very stoned and I want to get more stoned. So I'm going to spark up this next (laughs) joint as well. Man, speaking of stone, yeah, this guy actually... He's he's my idol when it comes to weed. He's my idol. Same. You know why? Because because you know I was uh <laughs> I was just the 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 small level guy, um cutting hair and selling dime and you know twenty sacks you know, and when he graduated from college, I mean you know <laughs> he took upon like a lifestyle that just you know was was and he didn't even really smoke weed like that but he you know was doing some major moves that like impressed me back then wait like somebody, what be more specific some, tell me had things to, somebody had to lay the road so to speak and trust me it wasn't just me it was other people who laid it but like you know just no i mean for our was, for the time like before it was legal right we were all I mean, everybody was yeah, selling I mean, packs. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we oh, had, I had everybody yeah. was selling packs, and we were like, "This is back when like you could get a P, you know, for like <clears throat> two grand and flipping in Atlanta for like six. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, wait, wait, because I've heard about these days. These oh, yeah. are the great. I've, days, I've heard about like, these magical days of weed. I didn't know. That's so incredible. You, and, and we <gasps> and and being growing up in San Francisco, I just like, got chills. Growing up in San Francisco with like the Sherbinskys of the world when they were. <laughs> And the and and the cookies and like these guys cookies? were cookies. Yeah, we talked about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We were in the mix of and getting the best weed on the planet. Like I didn't smoke bad weed till I came to LA. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, in he- I thought everybody had good weed. Like everybody I knew had good weed. Like, <laughs> I didn't know anything else until I came, and because LA's so big, you're like, oh fuck, what the? Everybody got. D- all right weed and some motherfuckers got good weed you know what i mean and it and it became like okay i came from a place i was spoiled when it came to weed Mm. to be honest um that's san francisco's ground zero though Mm -hmm. okay so let's get into this because i i started coming to san francisco in 2005 2005 Mm -hmm. When it was still, like, my mom, I tell, like, San Francisco is my mom's favorite city. Okay. Like, she loves that place. Mm-hmm. Um, and every time she comes to visit, I have to, like, find either a sneaky way or just, like, get in her face and be like, we can't go to San Francisco. The place you fell in love with, that's not there anymore. <laughs> is that a fair assumption or am I being too dramatic? Like, tell me about San Francisco back when you guys first kind of started out in well, all of this, because it born, sounds beautiful. Yeah, he was born and raised in San Francisco. So oh, I mean, yeah? Which which area? Yeah. It, uh, uh, Eagleside District, Lakeview area. Like. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm just being a nerd. Carry on. He just banged his hood right you now. Know, <laughs> we, you know, I mean, Ocean, like Ocean Avenue, where, you know, it's kind of you know there's this there's a spot called beeps thank god it's still there beeps but like is still there. <laughs> but like that changed a lot too <clears throat> like well, I mean, ne- you, there's i mean even I mean, there's so much gentrification but like you know I, I i don't i mean that's what happens right when you you uh, i'm glad the tech money brought that property value up it was luckily you know my parents owned their home and were able to, you know, sell it, you know, for a high value mm-hmm. for the little piece of, it was probably this size, you know, upstairs, downstairs, for the garage, like, you know what I'm saying? For more than what you would think in, you know, we were able to like, cool, was you know, shaking because of me. No, that was me, dude. Oh. We got, okay. So I need <laughs> to just tell everyone watching at home. We're currently smoking Kingston Royal. Yes. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm fucked up right so now. High, I'm guys. so what fucking high. I'm sure everyone this is yeah. So yeah, this so is the fire. Um this is this yeah. Is the gushers. And out at 28%. THC. I smoked this last night and I was I was out by like Ooh. 9 nine fifteen. That's why I can't get the, one of the things that <clears> we can't that's always kept us together is weed, right? You asked what that what kept us together. Is like we he's graduated to a whole nother level. I can smoke a lot more now, so I've graduated at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I could until I started smoking this. Mm-hmm. Wait, so back in the day when you guys first started in weed in San Francisco, cookies oh. was the main thing. Yeah, so I didn't start in San Francisco. So oh, you, you, so let me let me piece the story together. So it is all it. A lot of this took place in the Bay Area. We started out in San Jose where we went college. Um, he was born and raised in San Francisco, but after college, he came to L.A. And so the stories, damn, I never talked about the stories. Let's get in it. What's the stories? <laughs> well, how it all started. <coughs> so, oh, fuck, I've never talked about the stories. Mm. Can we? Are we allowed to get into it? Oh, oh. Oh man, I want to know. <laughs> yeah, we have to know now. I mean, you know, in a well, roundabout way. Yeah, in a round about, in a roundabout way. You, let's you just sum it up. Yeah, you know, because we can't really. I was, was playing ball in. The, oh, was, that's I was okay. Playing ball in the Canadian <laughs> Football League, and there were a lot of you know Canadian guys at the time who you know was first of all, the way I got turned on to this whole entire moment happening was that the in the Canadian Football League they don't drug test. 
And so we get to Canada and like all the American dudes are just smoking weed all day long. <laughs> I'm like, yo, like how are you going to play, man? You can't smoke that much fucking weed and go play. But like I was wrong. <laughs> like, I was completely wrong. Oh, right? that's like, so lovely to hear. Because I mean, I've been high before and like tried to engage in some kind of like, you know, athletic activity. Just not happening for me. <laughs> right. But like I remember in this one guy, I actually said his name out loud on um, another little podcast that I did in the, the, the host of the podcast knew this guy. So I'm not going to say his name this time. But mm-hmm. anyway, he was a teammate of mine. And I remember he came back to the huddle and he was like completely high. And I knew he got high all the time, uh, you know, outside of practice. But I saw him. I looked in his eyes and I was like, you're high. Like, mm. What are you doing? He was like, don't don't fuck with me right now. <laughs> I'm about like, to get this pick. I'm I, was like, I was like, all right. But you know you're high, right? Okay, dude. And so, like, you know, <laughs> when you're playing ball, it's like everybody has to have each other's back. Mm-hmm. So don't be fucking my shit up. <laughs> don't, be, don't, don't lose this game for us because you decided to fucking get high. You know what I mean? Like, shit, I need my check. And so, anyways, long story short, he was balling. Right. He was fucking balling. And I was like, okay. I started paying attention a little bit then, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing led to another. And, you know, just just say I just helped, you know, a lot of Canadian weed get to all the Prop 215 spots that they needed to get to in California back then, you know, just kind of being like a relationships guy. Mm -hmm. And so, anyways, it was very lucrative, if you must know. It was a very good time. But, you know, that's like one of those pathways that a lot of people don't really understand that's led to cannabis getting to where it is right now right yeah just you know the popularization of it right Mm -hmm. just you know the california market had like a a heavy need for canadian weed it was very popular right and if you were the guy and Mm -hmm. you could just make some things happen you were the guy and so we were i was we were the guys (laughs) that's fucking that's fucking dope i remember watching a movie about this years ago i can't remember who the fuck played the main kid in it but i feel oh i think i remember yeah it was just like an indie film yeah, and i remember I at that it. time it was really i mean again I find that. i've literally never but, done but anything they, wrong but, but it was out very there influential someone out there knows Send if you know comments dms whatever well, actually i know it damn i can't remember the name of it but i know because the kid he was like taking it over in duffel bags and mm. jumping it over the border i remember seeing that the guys used to do that. More clues. You know? <laughs> More clues. <laughs> <laughs> if you find no, it, you'll get movie. a like. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what I'm saying. Okay. More yeah. clues. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <coughs> and it was the guy who played the mean guy in Scrubs who was, hmm. yeah, in it. But it was, uh, that's fucking. If you guys can uh, find this movie, someone will get a, a, a joint mailed to them. Yeah, we'll mail you a joint. From Kingston Royal, right here. Oh, some of the fire. I mean, it's first of all, my lungs bad. and I ain't. Di- <coughs> I've been smoking since I was twelve. I was one of the guys smoking when I was in practice, <laughs> playing in the game. I had a great games. Mm-hmm. Um, <coughs> weed is very healthy for you. You know, you, there, there's no such thing as ODN because yeah. you just nap. Our uh, athletes and our veterans deserve it for yes. free. We got mental health issues. This is one of the ways to really. Mm. help mm-hmm. with that to be honest because agreed you know a football I, I i i was a different person when i was playing football because of the <coughs> all the constant <clears throat> like i always wanted to tackle somebody for no reason <laughs> i don't know why like i i would be at the mall and i'd be seeing people walking just goofy looking you this size way. people up all the time though always it's kind of like a little activity yeah. you know people don't even know i do it but i just do it like just walking just like yeah I would have broke his leg. <laughs> like, yeah, that guy right there, definitely, I would have broke his collar. You know, like, I love when people yeah. be looking this way and walking or on their uh, phone. I'm like, pow, I would have, ooh. <laughs> Keep your head on a swivel, boy. I mean, it's just innately in you. I don't know why, but that's wrong. You know what I mean? And I see that could happen with other people. I so, it, real, real, oh, sorry. No, I mean, I think that's a guy yeah. thing because I'm the same way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've yet to meet a okay, guy. Good. I mean, okay, I feel good. like my okay. dad's the only person. I, I don't uh, I didn't play football, but every time I see someone, I'm like, oh, dude, I want to just fucking kick him in the leg real quick. Could <laughs> <laughs> have just checked that dude. Oh, like, you can just listen to the other uh, podcasts to hear what the fuck you've been through, like living in this town, uh, though. Yeah, I'm not yeah. surprised. Yeah. Danny's been through some shit. Yeah. yeah. 
But um, sorry, yeah, I didn't mean to no. cut you off. What were we gonna say? Casual no, violence is fine. Right. It's pretty yeah, normalized at this point. Let's be. It's just honest. in my mind, you know. Yeah, exactly. You don't act. This is what I always say. You can think it. You can feel it. Fuck it. If you want to, you can say it, but you don't act on it. Yeah. You mm. never act on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, we, I mean we we got you know that I was, got, we got paid to do or kind of paid to do that. Yeah. So. I got mask shamed. Oh. Yesterday. Mask right. shamed. Got mask shamed. Um yeah. it's when someone's like, put a mask on. Yeah. Cause when I walk my dog, I don't wear a mask. Right. Cause you're outside. Yeah, and it's like fucking six o'clock in the fucking morning and right. there's like never anyone there. At that early? That early. Yeah. Wow, yeah. she was on her shit. Yeah, she was a she was a fresh a early Karen. I was up at four <laughs> looking for you. <laughs> I feel like she's been building up to it as well. Like, I feel like uh, I've seen her before mm. and she was just like waiting for the day. Mm. And so like, I, I walk watch in, you from my mirror. Y- I mean, oh, from my window. She's such a fucking, oh, fucking old crusty Karen. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm walking down this hill with Indy and there's lots of people around. I was surprised. There was like a lot of people for mm. like a fucking, I think it was like a Friday morning. So, oh yeah, go for it. And um, I'm walking down and all I hear at the corner of my ear is, or, or like see and hear is, put a mask on by this fucking ancient wench. <laughs> and so I'm just like, out of, n- I didn't even, it didn't even compute that I had said it until afterwards, but I was just like, eat a bag of dicks, bitch. And wow. I carry on down the street and then I get around the corner and I start panicking because there was a shitload of people and she was definitely <laughs> a senior citizen. Mm. <laughs> but um yeah and then i feel like that's when i'm like sometimes say it you don't have to say it like right, you know what right. i mean like she didn't need to hear that first thing in the morning like i feel like an asshole i don't know but if she's a karen she deserves it Fuck yeah her. i mean all, all, all like, karens deserve it yeah. they're so fuck. how like do you guys deal with karens in your lines of work oh my god i see them all the time where, where are the Karens They usually want to fuck this nigga, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, I see him all the time. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, they, um, dude, I, I, so I live in a marina in San Francisco, right? And so, if you know what the marina is, it's, it's not a lot of guys that look like me in a marina. Mm. And so, you know, it just is what it is. Money in the marina. But. Wait, what? <laughs> what? What? Yeah, you you, you encounter them all the time. I think what I do, um, and I've been I've become a champion of it, is I'll just like outsmart you. I'll talk to you in a way that where you know what, I just almost like just just spanked you. You felt like you just got spanked. <laughs> right. I'll just spank him real quick, you know, and just get up out the situation. Because their assumptions are already leading them in the wrong direction. Yeah, because you know? they are assuming already and 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 judging immediately. So they're already disarmed you know what i'm saying you're 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 already fucked up because you're already thinking i'm coming at you like this Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna just be like you know and hurt you even more because you're stupid you know i'm like Mm -hmm. we're ninjas Mm -hmm. you know it's like whatever you know and i'm I'm, and i'm mixed so i'm i'm black and filipino so i'm hitting them from multiple angles like (laughs) (laughs) see whenever i do that lanny says that i'm racist what when I'm like, Hi-ya! and he's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's just a martial <laughs> art, you know. <laughs> no. But I mean, it's more mental ninja yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm giving them utmost respect to that, you know, that culture of fighting, you know, because it is a me- it's a mental game, you know, that they play. No, I feel you. I think that's the best way, though, especially for the uh, the privileged people, yeah. right? Especially in your area, I'm yeah. assuming, like, best way to shut them up is the most respectful way. Right. You mm-hmm. know, instead of fucking going at them directly, you just kind of go around them, but still kick them in the head. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> yeah, they, exactly. they, they want you to be like, ah. Yeah. 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 They, they, that's, that's the way they, they start to um, victimize themselves right. if you do that. So you right. don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, I told you he's crazy. You know. Yeah. So yeah, but some t- some of them need a you know chop in the throat, uh. you know, a nice little swift chop in the throat for all the ones that like to talk, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what I was gonna say earlier. My bad. I just remembered it. So <laughs> if you see me over here squirming around and stuff and like mm-hmm. moving like my legs, so what weed does to me is it makes me feel every injury. 
Mm. So all my uh, injuries, that's why I don't shit. smoke that much unless I'm going to bed, right? Because when I smoke, I just feel every industry, uh, excuse me, injury. My knee starts going, my hip is going. Mm. You know, you'll see me mm-hmm. going like this with my neck. I'm just mm. cracking my neck. I just feel everything. And it's not a comfortable feeling mm. sometimes. That's not just so- not just high, but just like moving through life, period. Mm-hmm. It's just wow. like, fuck, dude. I'm like so beat up right now. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Regardless of the strain, it uh, the whichever uh, weed strain, it, it you feel the same way? For the most part. I mean, Damn. a sativa, that's why I like sativas over indicas um, because they just, you know, kind of elevate me up top you know yeah not the really. same same i can't do indica if i yeah. do smoke i can't do indicas mm. oh is that why i don't know in palm springs yeah. maybe yeah. yeah i used to i used to smoke sativas before i would uh you know do any boxing or more Thai because mm-hmm. it gets me uh focused more mm-hmm. if right. i do indicas i'm i'm fucking tired yeah, yeah right the body, yeah, body yeah. High. Yeah. Mm. yeah no i mean and that's what's kind of cool like when you, it's just like knowing your, oh, oh shit, I can't eat dairy because I'm going to be farting. You know what I mean? Uh, like, it, you know what I mean? It's just like knowing your, you know, what your consumption, you know, levels can be on anything. You have know? You, have you guys that social, sounds social, really social. fucking boring and restrained. Yeah. <laughs> just keep well, doing mean, it until you can't function. That's well, we the British talking about way. The, we're talking about the social media, right? Like too much social media even, like consuming oh, too much of that. Oh, right, right. Did you guys it see can the hurt documentary you. about that? I think I fell oh, asleep really some of it, but yeah, I it loved it. It was so I fascinating. Most of it. Have you it's cut down your usage? Dilemma. Social dilemma. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was pretty good. Have uh, you cut no, down? I have a no. no. How I? Cause I'm fully consumed. Oh really? <laughs> Damn, really, I have though. this Not image really. of you as like someone who's so controlled and no, like, like. So I mean, no, yeah, I'm not really. It doesn't really control me, but mm-hmm. you know, I have to be on it because of the brand. I yes. have to be communicating. I have to be. I'm forced to do it, and I'm terrible at it. Be honest with Same. you. I mean, I, I I can put up some pretty decent content, but like my follow through isn't what it should be, especially mm. for running a business. Like you, lightweight needs somebody just to do that job. Mm. Do you know what? I couldn't agree more, and I I kind of fucking hate that shit, like yeah. really deeply. Yeah. And like I, you know, this wouldn't exist if it weren't for social media. I've said it once. I'll say it again. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go get another beer. Can I get anyone anything? I'm okay. Please, I'll take another pineapple. You take another pineapple. Yeah. I'm so sorry for my pathetic. Options Kingston for beer, Royal. Kingston Royal. You guys should talk more about Kingston Royal. Oh my God, I'm so fucking yeah, high. I mean, Jesus Christ. It's a perfect segue. So, you know, when we were just talking about, um, you know, people. Yeah, when we we're just talking about people getting high, and uh, the activities that they do when they're high, uh, like, oh, excuse me, not the activities, but the way it makes you feel, right? Like mm-hmm. an indica that right. gives you like a body high. Same with me, right? And so, a year and a half, almost two years ago. Uh, we shot this uh, this series called um, the series called Blood Type Creative, and the idea was sparked up. Uh, I was at the store in San Francisco, and I saw this shirt and it said Blood Type Whiskey, and I was like, "Damn, that'd be dope to kind of like do that for like weed." So I did some T-shirts like Blood Type Indica, Blood Type Sativa, mm-hmm. and then we went Blood Type Creative because off of Blood Type Sativa and Indica, I just had this uh, assumption that I want. I, well, first, for me, like I said, sativas work well for me in a creative right. space. And I'm a creative. Los is a creative. You know, all our friends, you know, just like you guys, all in a creative space, right? And so for me, like, people that I know who smoke day to day, like, what was their go-to? Was it an indica or sativa? Mm. My impression is it had to be a sativa, right? right. Just to kind of, like, elevate your mind. So we did these interviews. And, like, you'd be super surprised. Like, everybody else already has their, you know, uh, a certain genetic makeup, right, that where uh, indica or sativa acts differently in them mm. than it does in other people. Right. And so we interviewed these, these shoot, we interviewed uh, Marta Goldschmidt, this Adriano Goldschmidt's daughter. She uh, has a couple different brands. Um, she started Made Gold and a... And it's does she's the bad girl of denim. If you look her up on um, look her up on uh the internet. Got her Shante Wayne. She's from the Wayne's family. She's a comedian. She represents the LGBTQ community. <laughs> um, then also uh, who else? Columbus Short, uh, actor, played in Stomp the Yard. And these are all our friends. These are people mm-hmm. that we know that we just chill with on a day to day basis, right? Um, 
the Dew Twins. They're like this international DJ duo. They're both twins. Two uh, girls are from like, I think, I, I want to say Koreatown, but they're from LA for sure. Okay. But uh, anyways, they travel around the world DJing sets. And then uh, wow. my homeboy, he's a rapper, skateboarder, uh, 86 June. And so we got a different story from all of them, right? Mm -hmm. The question was, was how, do you, how does we um, play a role in your creativity right. process, right? And so got some people I'm smoking in because because it helps calm me down to where you know and now I can think you know level headed right mm. versus like a person like me who smoked the sativa and you know just to kind of like block out everything else that I'm feeling mm. and just to have that mental right. you know concentration when I'm you know in it when I'm when I'm high and so everybody had a different answer. It was completely like, you know, surprising. I thought it was uh, brilliant. You can find some of those interviews right now on KingstonRoyal.com. Oh, shit. Okay. Slide all the way down to Blood Type Creative and Got you know, check out those interviews. We'll, but, uh, we'll, we'll put that in the description, too. Yeah, for yeah. sure. That's, that's amazing. But super dope, though. And that's like, you know, that's what Kingston Royal is. Kingston Royal, you know, started out, you know, cannabis for creatives. But, you know advertising it as you know creative kind of like put us in a box because not everybody you know really um associates themselves with being creatives right mm -hmm. my architect smokes you know he's doing his job but he's fucking creative mm -hmm. right and so you know we kind of expanded and made it more about originality right our tagline that you see on billboards in san francisco mm -hmm. is inhale originality excel your reality right and that's just wow. a notion that just you know basically says like dude like you know Bet on yourself, you know, like your creativity is that special. You know, I, for, for me, the creative process is is everything. Just having that ability. And I don't get the uh, the opportunity to do it as much anymore. Um, I'm trying to set up a microphone in my house so I can just, you know, kind of record myself rapping and shit. Nigga. Yeah. This dude. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, I used to. I used to kind of. I'm not even going to front. Oh, I was trying to manage him. Him <laughs> oh, and my shit. other buddy, Jay Lotto. I was trying I to manage this. them too. I want to hear this. Yeah, me too. Ah, yeah, no. Bars, bars. I mean, but hey, you know, at some point there's those there'll be some leaks out there. He did a song with Tank and everything. I mean, Tank did a song called Sex Pistol. Hey, <laughs> I, it's out there somewhere. It's out there. Tank? Floating. If so y'all can find it, uh, it's another Colonel yeah, singer. R&B Tank. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. You That's know, amazing. it's kind of fire too. The song it's, is dope. It's fire. See, this is what I'm saying. But see, though, these are like I said. These are all the things that, you know, you know, we can kind of pursue. But, you know, as a business, he's I like I said, I'm I'm proud of this guy because he's created the actual business. He's doing it right, you know, legally, you know, follows all this. I mean, he was he's just as as anal as he was about, you know, football and, and you know, he is about his business building these brands, you know. And that's that, and and because it's 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 so important in the, in the space because there's not a lot of um, social equity, you know, people of color in the space, even mm -hmm. though it was something that was used to kind of demify, you know, guys that look like him. Well, I was gonna say, can we like get into that maybe a little bit more, like, because on the KABC show we're super restricted about how much detail we can go into yeah, with I, like the brands and advertising, all that kind of stuff. I have a real good story for you. Yeah, I have a really, really good story for you. So, I, everybody knows me. So I, I like to try to like you know re-identify myself. You know, every couple of years, like Ron Akami, and my last name is Akami, O C K I M E Y. Ron Akami played football. Mm -hmm. After football career, Ron Ock, which is just O-C-K, the first three letters of my last name, he was somebody that you love to hate. He was just a very flamboyant, like, life after football. Like, I was, that was a very fun time in my life, right? So, I go by Ron Brandon. Brandon is my middle name. So, the story and the way Ron Brandon even came about was me, you know, being black, and being worried about, you know, the way I'm viewed and trying to enter this industry. You know, I had to switch it up. You know, I didn't really want to be associated with, you know, football anymore or like people to, you know, not, you know, not give me a solid shot or look at me for like my talent or anything like that. And like make a judgment based off of, oh, that's the guy who played football. Like, no, 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 no. no. Like, don't identify me like the football player. Like, you will respect, you know, mm -hmm. my level of, mm -hmm. you know, just genius, you know. On well, I'm also a CEO is. of my own company, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you know what I mean? So it's like, I, this is a funny story. So anyways, 
So my name is Ronald Akami, right? Ronald Brandon Akami. My dad's name is Ronald Akami. Uh, so there's a kid in South Philadelphia. I grew up in Philadelphia. So it's a kid junior. in. Huh? Like a junior. So <laughs> listen, I'm a junior? Yeah. No, I'm not junior because I have a middle name. Oh. My dad doesn't have a middle name. Mm. And so, anyways, there's this kid in uh, <coughs> Philadelphia just pops up on the scene and like we're seeing like you know shit with about him on instagram blah 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 and he has the same fucking name as me right and so my sisters are already on top of it they're like you know investigating it you know my brothers are talking back and forth you know i only chime in when it's time to chime in so when i chimed in i'm like okay so what are we going to do about this who's going to find out <laughs> <laughs> you know and so found out and you know he he, he, you know, he grew up his whole life under the assumption that my father is his father and his mother named him after my dad. So that's how him and I have the last same last name. But technically, because I have a middle name, he's junior. So, you know, mm -hmm. but let me tell you about junior. So a couple years after hilarious, I'm just on the Internet. You know, and this is right after, you know, I, I, I got the, um, you know, the infraction that qualified me for social equity in Long Beach. Right right after that so i was just trying to stay way off the radar mm -hmm. you know what i mean let me just fall back i get the google in my name and my name pops up and it's for like attempted murder in philadelphia and oh, i'm like whoa shit. i was like hold up what the fuck is going on here so i'm like investigating it more and if you look at it it's like ronald alchemy he's born 1987 mm -hmm. i was born 1978 it's like a little too close Ooh. you know what i mean or even if somebody that early oh, in the cannabis industry uh, was going to be giving me an opportunity uh -huh. whatever everybody's background checking you everybody's checking out every right. single thing right and so for me i was like you know what it's time to switch it up Ron Brandon it is. <laughs> so I started going oh, by, you know, my, my, my first and my, uh, excuse me, my first and my middle name. And that's kind of who I'm known, well, not kind of, that is who I'm known as uh, in the cannabis industry, mm -hmm. Ron Brandon. I totally rebranded myself mm -hmm. and did it successfully. Take notes. Very <laughs> successfully. Sure. Sure. No, but that's the crazy story. That's why I go by Ron Brandon. Wow. Real street shit. Real street shit. Y'all wanted that real street shit? Yeah. Yeah. That's real street shit. South Philadelphia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, hey, but you know, this country was, you know, uh, commandeered on some real street shit. Mm -hmm. So, and Holy. then they, and then you rebrand. <laughs> When's the, the rebranding gonna happen? The American Dream, and that was the rebranding. <laughs> Oh, that, yeah, that, no, that worked great, guys. The rest of the world is like, oh, yeah, America's terrific. Yeah. Love that place. Right. And, then, and now we're seeing the, the bullshit, you know? It's like, oh come on, God. man. I feel like I have this, like, dwelling sense of dread in the pit of my stomach for November because I'm just like, oh. somewhere fucked up in the back of my head, I'm like, please let the aliens invade. Please just let them fucking invade <laughs> before the election. Like, it'll just be good news. Uh, Let's be honest with you. Wait, you watched the... We didn't even get into this on the show. You watched the idea. whole fucking debate. I did. How are you not lobotomized? Well, Holy I like shit. I, I feel like, you know, over these past three years, I kind of built up a tolerance for the ignorance, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, sure. like we all for have, sure. right? Yeah. You know, I kind of expected it for most for the for the most part mm -hmm. you know it's almost it's so it's so predictable that you can <laughs> i almost i predicted you know his behavior and his approach to you know getting on biden and you know let me say something because i hear a lot of newscasters saying some just real fucked up shit and i'm i'm, I'm not like you know getting biden's back or anything like that but he was definitely antagonized that whole entire time. It was crazy. And so, like, they're getting on him about, like, his reaction. Like, you shouldn't have said shut up, man, or you shouldn't have called him a clown. Mm. And I'm like, dude, that's the only couple things. Like, dude, we've been dealing with three years of this dude just saying all kind of crazy stuff. And you got the nerve to get on Joe Biden for defending himself, mm -hmm. calling President, you know, Trump a clown. It's, it's like a boxer. and He's always <laughs> under, you know, hitting you in the, below the belt. And he's like. Come on, man. He's hitting me below the belt. And then you hit him below the belt. And he's like, oh, see, he hit me below the belt. <laughs> yeah, it just like. like the the it's crazy. It's so ignorant. <laughs> it's like it's not even real. It's like a, a reality show, yeah. you know? Oh, 100%. I said on the radio yeah. show, it was like a fucking UFC press conference. It was like a press conference. <laughs> yeah. That's it's crazy. exactly what it was. Yeah. It was like, oh. This whole year feels so fucking surreal. It's, it's this nice. year has been crazy. I mean, how do yes. you find um, 
like the weed industry has gotten over the last year because like right at the start wasn't there like like prices went up and then year, yeah, yeah. there was no weed and then yeah. everything caught fire yeah. and then at some point everyone you got robbed right yep we got robbed what yeah during the riots everything yeah. got everybody yeah during the oh riots my. no fucking so we way didn't, yeah so we didn't even really so san francisco didn't really have a riot they had a peaceful protest right and you had a group of individuals that targeted that targeted <laughs> all cannabis businesses let me be clear mm-hmm. about that all oh, cannabis heist. businesses that Shit. night and so like it was like a synchronized event. Like these people were, you know, communicating through social media. Everyone know where where to go. Everyone knew where to go and what time to meet at those places. And they just like, you know, just t- dude. It was synchronized. They just robbed like eighty percent of the dispensaries in the Bay Area. Oakland got hit hard, and San Francisco got hit really hard. This guy's just driving around because the cops are downtown, you know, patrolling what they thought was going to be a riot. Meanwhile, like the criminals were just like running fucking loose, just breaking into buildings. Our spot got hit twice in one night. The cops actually came to the building and, you know, responded to the first alarm. They wait. They they went in. They swept the building. Guns out and all of that stuff. Cop leaves the door, you know, after they um, broke open the door. The cop leaves the door, you know, just wedged. Leaves something in the door, you know, with the door wide open. And so... I think there's something going on. Some kind of legal dispute with the city of San Francisco right now about that. But... These guys came back four hours later Mm. with 10 times the people. Three guys came in at first. They came back with like 30 people. Like literally when you see the video, it was crazy. Came in with 30 people and they cleared us out in like fucking eight minutes. Cleared us out in like eight minutes. Just like millions. Yeah, it was crazy. Was there any insurance on that? (laughs) Can you start an insurance company to cover that? Is no, that there's, the next there's, thing? I mean, there's, yeah, there's, there's insurance. There's I mean, insurance companies yeah. right now making a lot of money off cannabis businesses. Yeah. But can you do it? You know, your own. I mean, if I had the bandwidth, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, damn, do that's anything. fucked you need a, up. You need a bank. Fuck, man, that's awful. Cunts. Yeah. What a bag they of got, cunts. They got everybody. It was the craziest yeah. thing. Like it was all over the news. Uh, we even had like the the uh, the, um, the 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 news. The news helicopter flying over our facility. You know? wow. <laughs> I was on the phone with him, like, "Is that you in the parking lot?" I was like, "Yeah, that's me." No. <laughs> well, that's crazy. Cool. How'd you? How was the recovery? It was slow. So you got to understand, like, when the riots happened, like right before the riots happened, you know, obviously we went into quarantine, right? And so mm-hmm. going into quarantine, first of all, for cannabis, like the business like doubled almost tripled in some areas right so it was great time quarantine everybody wanted to stay home and smoke weed (laughs) what happened was is you know the riots were happening at the same time and then the prices of weed just go through the roof Mm -hmm. why because well this is my assumption you know just looking at the market and knowing it the way that i know the market um we're in a total like black market takeover right now like the black market influences the legal market so heavily and people have no idea mm-hmm. right and so like a lot of the um you know the good product you know was still kind of going out the back door you know um if you go back like a year before that you know a part of the reason things happen that way is because all of you know when legalization happened and everyone threw up their farms um a lot of the traditional farmers who had you know acres on acres up in the hill you know with supply like a good you know percentage of the you know the product in california those guys packed it up those guys said i'm not dealing with regulations i'm not dealing with legalization this is you know you guys can have it they all moved to costa rica or wherever the fuck right no but this is true stuff and so you know obviously you know we were going to have a shortage everybody knew we were going to have a shortage and so it happened and when a shortage hit if you had weed you were king and so the prices went up now understand this the retail market hasn't changed the lick, right? You can only sell. I mean, you you being a consumer, let's just you just put your put your uh, self in a position of the consumer. First of all, nobody's working right now, so the economy is taking a hit. You don't have like you know just expendable cash on hand. So when you go to the dispensary, you want to kind of shop for value, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody's buying one hundred dollar eighths right now. I don't think a hundred dollar eighth was really even ever that popular. I feel like a handful of brands, you know claim that you know top 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 tier you know and paid to do it whatever Mm -hmm. and so you know hundred dollar ace were available but they didn't sell that well why because you can have well you can get comparable weed 
at a cheaper price, right? Yeah. From brands that you know people don't really know that well, like you know uh, Kingston Ford. Royal, yeah. right? Yeah. And so what's happening is is that the prices went up, and they're selling you know packs right now. I was just on the phone with a friend of mine, and she was like, "Yeah, they're not letting anything go uh, for less than thirty two hundred. So like, if you do the math on that on the retail side, really quick. Let's actually let's do the math. I, I, I love doing yeah. The math. I'm not. I'm, I just smoked two of your. Jo- I'm. F- yeah. So let's just let's just let's just say you know thirty five hundred a pound, right? Mm-hmm. Immediately you got to add tax to that. So mm-hmm. it's cultivation tax. One hundred fifty. Uh, excuse me. One hundred fifty four dollars and forty cents. So one fifty four forty cents. All right. Now that pound is three thousand dollars. You know one hundred and fifty four bucks, right? Let's times that by 10 because you don't want to get nothing less than a 10 pack because it's not worth it. So you get a 10 pack, you add $600 on that for testing, right? And you divide. I just, I don't know what button I just hit. I fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> 3000 a hold pound. Up, hold up. I know it. I know Tax. I know it. Times 10. <laughs> uh, testing costs. Anyways, long story short, shipping and handling. To, what it comes out to is about like 20, 27, 20, almost 27 bucks, right? So you got to add a distribution cost onto that, which is usually about 10%. So let's just sell that eighth for $30. Already, you're at, you're at a loss of profit. We haven't even added in the packaging, the compliance on it, or, you know, the labor on that jar either, right? So you do a you know, multiplier, let's just say, you had to raise the price, right? The three uh, to sell it for thirty five. Uh, excuse me, thirty five bucks wholesale, right? Mm-hmm. Which no buyer in the industry is buying fucking Nobody. plants no. at you know wholesale for eighths at wholesale for thirty five bucks. Mm-hmm. Nobody's mm-hmm. doing it, right? And so you just raise that to thirty five. Like if you do the math on that now, well, just to make just to make three bucks on it, you have to sell a thirty five dollar eighth. And so you times two that, you know, that's what seventy bucks. Two and a half, actually. Let me do two. And yeah, because the the, the yeah. shop has to make their money. Well, yeah. So you know they're putting their you know five ten on it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's eighty eighty seven five, right? So eighty seven five. That's a ninety dollar eighth. Nobody's buying ninety dollar eighths at the club. Yeah. So what I'm getting at is that there's a lot of legal operations right now that they know what they're doing. They they know they know that you know there's some sort of you know black market play involved. Mm-hmm. You know where you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna exploit you know the actual you know pathway but there's there's influence you know Mm -hmm. and it's bad because it's jacking up the market and it's hat and it's making it hard for like you know people to uh you know continue to do their business so what's the um so i'm assuming obviously like the cost is passed on to the consumer i need to give me like a paper towel i'm like starting to sweat for some reason oh i can get you one Mm-hmm. The beer. What's that? Uh, the uh, beer. Can you want to position the fan this way? Yeah, it should. Oh, fuck. It should be rotating. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm getting old, man. Oh, yeah, dude. I didn't do anything and I'm hurting. Yes. Yes, I can. Thank you. <clears throat> Oh, by the way, does uh, does um, Kingston Royal have a dispensary? No, we don't have a dispensary, but um, I myself, uh, I am um, partners in a group that's uh, uh, a person of color led team that is going after a handful of retail uh, retail licenses right now in okay. the state of California. Got it. Um, so, what's the yeah, name of the group? Public. Public. Yeah. Oh yeah, you mentioned this. Yeah, Sunday. yeah. Mm-hmm. Outside of the radio show. Yeah. But mm. yeah, no, no KR dispensary. That that'll be the dream, maybe one day, for sure. Yeah, and then we're gonna it. franchise it. Well, exactly. I mean, you know, I, I mean, does Kraft Macaroni have a a shop? <laughs> oh, oh, that's such a good. It's like, do you want to be Kraft or do you want to be Starbucks? Right, you know what I'm saying. Wait, like, which which of those two makes more money? I don't know. They're they're do, both doing pretty well. Either one. It's just it depends on your model, you know, and I think, you know, I, st- storefronts are getting hit hard right now. Like of anything, restaurants and bars and clubs and all that. I mean, you know, obviously cannabis is is a space that, you know, will still thrive just because people need to smoke and they, you know, however they use it. And, you know, they'll 
downgrade and get lesser and you know they'll figure it out but um all the other businesses including cannabis too i mean with the hits and you know shit like that and like everyone's getting hit you know so i was gonna say up in the desert so we were just up in joshua tree Mm -hmm. but one thing that i've started to notice (laughs) is uh i fucking love it up there it's so nice The, the fires almost hit there you know Oh, shit, Danny, so I didn't tell you, you know, when we were driving back, we drove past a wildfire as it was starting, but I was kind of like just leaning against the window, just like, oh, it's a wildfire. (laughs) (laughs) They probably already know. Like one of those kind of <laughs> moments, someone's I was just like, "Someone's gonna fix it." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like I've been drinking a lot over the last few days, <laughs> but um, yeah, no. But one, what I was gonna say was one of the things I've noticed out in the desert, but also in Big Bear, like Arrowhead. Um, well, those are the only three places that I've super noticed it. But all across San Bernardino County, everywhere's just delivery only, no mm. storefronts, yeah. and so we, <laughs> I googled. Uh, a spot when we were in Lake Arrowhead and I found a place there was delivery I called the guy up he was like yeah I'll send you the menu now send me the menu and I was just like holy shit I can get a fucking ounce for a hundred bucks and remember I grew up with like bushweed it Mm. was so bad it was like grown in like your neighbor's basement that definitely had mold (laughs) and like mice and you kind of smoke it and it just looks all stringy and disgusting and like it belonged in like rolling stone in the like fucking 70s or whatever (laughs) but um so i'm like okay i'm for sure gonna fucking take that that. deal like 100 percent and uh it arrives it arrives in a fucking one of these mason jars and they're not fucking cheap. Right. And so I'm like, holy shit, this is an amazing deal. And as we're kind of like driving away from the, like this, you know, senior citizen who's delivered the weed, <laughs> I was just like, we did that all legally. Like I sent him like all my paperwork and Lanny's just like, what's, what's wrong? And I was just like, there's no way that he can afford to do this <laughs> on the legal market. And Lanny was just like, I love California. And I was just like, oh shit my clients are gonna be fucked (laughs) like it was like that sudden realization and i don't know is that something that like do you give um sell kingston roll to any dispensaries that are delivery only yeah how many would you say three no i know you uh, you mentioned you're on ease yeah so that's actually statewide delivery i forget yeah so it'll be statewide delivery here pretty soon where are all the places that people can buy kingston royal Right now, um, the major dispensaries in San Francisco, for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, we're on Burners on Hate, um, that's the Mission cookies. Organics. That's, yeah, a big that, that's, yeah. that's like a flagship one. Mission Organics, Mission Cannabis Club, um, I don't know, hand, a bunch of other ones, the major ones in the city. And then you can find this, uh, we're starting to creep down here in Southern California. So we're in Santa Barbara at uh, HPC and on Long Beach at um, Culture. You have a, does your website have any uh, like locations? It doesn't right now. Okay. And that's something that we got to get put up. Got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. If you, I mean, if you have the information, we could, put, we could definitely put it out for you. Dope. Yeah. yeah. And then you work with a, and a, involved in a bunch of other brands as well. Like there was one joint, um, one joint, one, uh, <laughs> it was a pre-roll. Mm-hmm. It looked like a freaking cigar. It has like a yeah. glass or like a mm-hmm. clear plastic. I don't even know no, what. It was so yeah, fucking it was fancy. Yeah. Was it the SF, Lo- yeah. the Lobos? Yeah, SF Roots uh, times Lobo. So those are two black owned businesses that did a partnership, a co- mm-hmm. little collaboration on a product. It's fire. I got to say, so I grew up smoking, obviously, bushweed. But the part that I left out was I also spent a lot of time in Morocco Mm. smoking what is, in my opinion, the greatest shit in the whole fucking world, which is Moroccan hash. Mm. Um, Like, I, I, upon moving to the States, was like, weed's going to be legalized. Woo! Every dispensary I go to everywhere is just like, oh, this is this is the hash. And it's just like this kind of powdery nothing. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, um, like I'm a complete diva about it. Uh, but Rom gave me one of these uh, SF, lo- the Lobos. Lobos. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah, hash it it was infused. it was the first thing I've ever smoked in my life that I preferred to smoking Moroccan hash. Mm. Like it mm. spoiled me to the point that even when I smoke a spliff now, there's mm-hmm. a part of me that is upset that it's not one of those. Right, right. Like, and I don't level. pretend to be what special. Was what was in that one? I don't. I'm not sure. That one may have been infused. I don't know. It, it was. Not, it was. It? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was. Oh my. Oh my God. It was mm. amazing. Like I'll find I'll find it on the site or find somewhere that's yeah. advertised. I'll put it in the link. Please, if you're watching or listening and it's legal where you are and you can get it, please go and buy one of these. Try it. If anything happens to you, we are not legally responsible <laughs> for anything. But please try it, rate it, leave a comment because it's fucking delicious and amazing. Only top shelf. Yeah, only top shelf. Only and top shelf. I you feel know, like thing, that's very representative. One thing I do want to say is I feel like I know this is not like the most important thing about your brand, but it's so aesthetic. Mm-hmm. I love the aesthetics, <clears throat> the branding, the font, sorry, <clears throat> the color, even the clothing. Mm. Like, because I, I personally don't like wearing, like if you see, I wear no, right. no label. Right, for sure. But then it was actually one of the first brands recently that I saw. I was like, oh, dude, I would actually wear this. Dope. Like, yeah. And I, I showed a buddy of mine. He's the same way. We don't wear anything that, it, that really has a brand. Right. But it's so aesthetic. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you design everything yourself? I did. Like so, everything Damn. that you're naming, wow. like, I, I played. I I played a major part in all of the design and everything. You know, I you know now he could draw really good too. Yeah, I'm like an oh. artist as well. Cut hair pretty good. Like he, so I was kind of the guy cutting everybody before the game, but he was like actually like the strategic. Like uh, uh. I only cut a couple people. <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of bougie. Limiting his supply. He was the luxury. He was like, mm, if you want that luxury barbers. shit, come to me. <laughs> I was the everyday uh, guy. Like, yeah. yeah. All right, give me ten bucks. Get out of here. <laughs> he was the like, you know, he had the like Louis Vuitton like. Is there? Drink. I had the whole setup. I had, had the. I had, I had four different pairs of clippers. Oh you know, shit! I had the cape. Like I, I had the cape. The, the hair duster. <laughs> <laughs> VIP. Something to like massage your VIP. feet. Yeah. You get the girls will come in from the bus from the laundromat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like casual. Uh, that like is straight what you call up. a callback, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, professional. Thank do you, you. Uh, do you have an ETA for the restock of your apparel? Yeah, because that's Cause the wanna, next big thing right. that October we've got to promote. October, October first. first. Yeah, that was yesterday. Two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. November 1st November. COVID <laughs> Like 2020 is just like <laughs> Fuck this shit What year is it? Yeah was Two days ago <laughs> My friends just released a song about 2020 And it's the most hateful thing I've ever heard in my entire existence But uh This is all like great news though It sounds fun We'll get some It's a shame we don't have some to like Show off you know We got the weed though It's fucking dope Yeah I got you guys I got you guys No no yeah. We were just So I'll, this was I'll, Yeah we were talking about Oh do you wanna Do you wanna take it uh, Is it Cause I was I was telling saying? Kay like I'm, I'm just gonna purchase it Yeah no we don't yeah. yeah that's what so, we do Friends that's how friends Support sure. one another 100% you know I live by that as well Yeah You know my, my buddy His daughter has her own Little clothing line Aww. And you know they uh, gave me a couple T-shirts not too long ago, and you know, oh no, no, it's on the house. It's, it's, it's you, it's you. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let me set the example early, right? She's mm-hmm. like, twelve years old. I'm like, listen, if your friends really support you, they'll pay for your exactly. shit. Right. Fuck yeah. So here you go. Yeah. And this is another thing I right. want to ask. So you're doing? Um, it's not a because I asked. I was like, you should do a podcast, and you were like, no, I don't want to do a podcast. I just, I just do this thing every single morning. Where and then that was <laughs> it. it. Just like kind of disappeared. <laughs> So, are you doing? You're also doing a podcast. Do you have a podcast? You got to promote your shit too, dude. I don't. What's if it's a I don't have anything, any ongoing anything going <laughs> on. I'm more of the creator behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. I don't really like the spotlight nice. or. Um, but yeah, I'm really fascinated with creating, um, you know, things. But I did, <laughs> I, I, you know, fascinating with creating things. I do. I mean, I love. I used to. <laughs> Uh, in the bay, I got my start in the bay. I was doing, you know, I used to work for the Oakland Raiders. I was, you know, doing stuff on Raiders.com, you know, a lot of oh, content. Mm. And I was doing, 
uh, a lot of the hyphy movement. I shot a lot of those music videos. Los, Los did shoot a lot of like the yeah. uh, the videos during the hyphy movement in the Bay Area. Los was involved on a lot of those video shoots. Yeah, yeah. So short fuse productions. That's, short fuse. That's, that's a little throwback. Yeah, that was <laughs> that, me, that, that was my first email. Yeah, that was my first email. For, for yeah, short, short fuse. fuse productions. Yeah. <laughs> he basically you know, everything that we were doing in college, he just kept on doing it, um, and it just led him into like you know. We were doing it real ratchet, so he was shooting ratchet ass videos yeah. right there. That's kind of led into yeah. you know bigger and better things, but yeah, and more polished ratchet videos. Mm. You, know? <laughs> you know, it was like we were paying to show ratchery. You know what I mean? Like no, um, they were paying us to you know shoot this stuff, and it was cool. I mean, I was you know a, a part of a lot of the kind of that movement that you know kind of coined the area you know and because being from that it was mm -hmm. i was a proud moment but uh, i moved to la and just kind of fell in more into the comedy space and was able to you know um kind of capture a yeah, little no, bit that was like a weird transition i don't yeah. like how did that even happen you know i i was i was really yearning for more i don't know why it was like i i felt like oh i'm not you know, I was able to create stuff for someone and was like, oh, you're now you're earning more royalties and earning, you know, I was looking at the business end of it like, oh, whoa, whoa. I just got my little couple of dollars. And, you know, I was like, I want more, you know, well, it's mm -hmm. the first opportunity. Yeah, um, we we were getting more video shoots that were from labels in L.A. And, uh, you know, Univer uh, Universal, Warner, I was working with my buddy Rock and mm -hmm. my buddy Gio. Um, yeah, and you had we, me on an Angie Stone video. And he was a talent. <laughs> you know, we were working on Angie Stone video. Uh, and he, we play, he, Ron played a talent because we needed like a, you know, um, little, you know, a, little chocolate a love, love interest. A love interest, you know. <laughs> and, you know, I studied film and TV and I was uh, kind of exercising all my you know things that i learned and i wanted to do on a, a as a career mm -hmm. and uh and just kind of cut to, i was doing corporate i was in the corporate space too i was the recruit it recruiter i was in the you know in the bay area making decent money uh you know working with he didn't want to do that though i didn't want to do it you know it was just like ah, i gotta wear this fucking suit every day you know, <laughs> so let me let me say yeah. this though because you know not everybody not everybody was a go-getter. One of the reasons why me and him, excuse me, I wasn't talking in the phone, the microphone, <laughs> but not everybody's a go-getter. So one of the reasons why him and I, you know, were always tight, whatever, because, you know, I could get him excited about something real easy, mm -hmm. you know, and he'd get me excited about something. All right, well, fuck it, let's do it. Like, you know, no limitations. Like, you know, yeah. let's, let's shoot. You know, you miss, you miss. Fuck it. But, like, we shot. And so, like, during that time when things were dying down in the Bay Area, you know, I had a couple of talks with him. I was like, dude, you need to just go to L.A. He's like, oh, yeah. And like next <laughs> yeah. time, next time I was back in town because I used to come back, uh, you know, to the Bay Area during the off season when I was playing football. I would live in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And so um, came back the next time and he was gone. He was in L.A. I'm <laughs> like, damn, you did it. I was even like, damn, you did it. You in LA? Like, how is it? Right. Like, you know, like, and it was a struggle. Yeah, like, I mean, it was your first yeah. anyone. I don't give a. I don't give a damn. I mean, you know, you could come from, you know, a, a wealth and, and still make it right. But I, I, anyone coming to L.A., it's just no matter what your resume ha it has, you kind of got to start from scratch. It's his yeah. own beast. Yeah. You know oh what I'm saying? You guys 100%. know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, shit. I mean, even 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 if you're from here, it's you have to make a different mm -hmm. transition. Right? right. You can't still do the same shit you were doing, yeah. you know, coming up. And so that was a, its own transition but i think the 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 tools that i learned helped me advance faster and recognize opportunities faster um and so i was able to excel and and you know get with a you know a great mentor you know which i advise you know mm. in the space especially in, uh, like la like your resume doesn't yeah. really matter but you know who you know that that phrase who yes. you know still exactly will get you in but yeah. what you know will keep you in too mm. you know what i'm saying well said. and and so those tools that you bring on the positive side that help you become a better you bring in you know positive energy and and value to any situation is really what 
kind of kept me in the game. Mm. And I was just like, oh, I'm going to just hustle. That's Well, yeah, I mean, you know. so that right there is what kept you in the game. It was the hustle. So, like, when I would come down and, like, see him, he was just going from one job to the next. Like, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't stop moving. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You don't stop working. And so that was, that's what you did that was good. Yeah. You just kept on working. Every time, you know, you see you uh, or talk to you about something, like, you're on this shoot, you're doing that, you got this next week. This He just kept moving, which mm-hmm. is good. That's the thing. You can't stop. Yeah, you can't, can't stop. Uh, yeah. Shout out to insane. Diddy. Uh-uh. <laughs> stop, <we'll> stop. <laughs> that's, uh, that's like what you guys have is like me and Kay. Yeah, uh, like even this podcast thing. Um, we we talked about it a few days before we started, mm-hmm. and then I was like, oh, should we do it? Should we do it? And then in one moment, I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I ordered all the equipment <laughs> in, in in five minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it got t- got hot, got here two days later, and we started our first podcast. Dope. That's like l- that. yeah, literally, yeah. and I feel yeah. like, I mean, you're the eldest of eight. Do you have siblings? I'm the youngest of three. Mm. Okay. Yeah. See that that fucks up my hypothesis <laughs> <laughs> so badly. We're, we're both only childs. both only children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like <clears throat> it's that kind of like, well, fuck it. If it if it goes wrong, we'll try something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who gives a shit? Hmm. And right. like you honestly, that's a old, that's a that's an only child's mentality. Well, no, I, that's what I was saying. Like because you guys aren't only children, right. it fucks up that hypothesis. So <laughs> now I have to find what no, no, what no, the but, common. But, but what we have that's different from you guys is that yeah. we came up in sports. So sports oh. teaches you that, yeah. right? So oh, that's, that's our so common thing. Sports teaches you that. Right? Yeah. You know, you're not gonna be successful if like you sit and you cry about the last play mm-hmm. getting beat, like. Dude, the game just started. That's one touchdown. Right. Still yeah. like three more quarters and we can still win this thing, right? right? So, you know, you kind of get mentally, you know, mm-hmm. shaping to know that like, hey, you know, you get the fight goes down, on. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Right. You just keep it moving. Yeah. The fight it's goes beautiful. on. And and that's the, you know, one thing I got um, with the seasons, right? Like we love summer, you know, and we're like, oh, I love summer, but seasons change and it's like the only constant is change, mm. right? And you got to get comfortable with change. He like pulling out all his jewels on you. Know, right now. He's trying it. to drop all the I jewels. I mean, you know, you know <laughs> I just try, I've never been the oh, your guys. <laughs> I'm out here, guys. <laughs> but I feel like people in Los Angeles, I feel like uh, so many people come here ready. Like, yeah. I'm so excited to experience what the city has to offer. Right. And then within right. like two years, they're suicidal. And right. it's just yeah. like, oh, dear. <laughs> like, it, you, yeah. and it's, it gives but you it's, so much exposure. Yeah. But change is the one yeah. thing that all of the successful people I know, when they're faced with something new, they're just like, okay. And then they just yeah. Yeah. carry on. You, you There's just no, yeah, sure. no reaction. Right. No reaction. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of how I am. Yeah. yeah. Like and just keep it. Very like just stoic. Right, cool. same, same. Yeah, you guys yeah. are both so stoic. I feel like we might be the ones who have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we are we need the yeah. the steady, like, okay, that's what we're doing. Cool, mm-hmm. cool. Because I, mm-hmm. was, I was a little over here, but, yeah. you know. It's yeah, the grounding. Well, when I first met, first met you a couple yeah. days ago, first thing, I don't know, for me, like I told you, like, I'm really good at um, reading faces and kind of getting yeah. the vibe off, off the spot. And I, f- I can sense the work ethic because you know what? Like, it's not a, it's not a diss, but you look tired. You're not yeah. tired because you're partying. You're tired yeah. because you're working. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. straight up. And I saw it. I was I <laughs> yeah. saw it instantly. I was like, oh, fuck. I, that, can, I yeah. can definitely connect with this guy because I appreciate sure. that. You know, yeah. yeah, that day, by the way, for me, started at 4 a.m. I drove all the way to the Central Valley. I was in Visalia mm. at a farm. <laughs> Then after that, had to shoot all the way over to Santa Barbara, mm. make a drop off at a delivery, then shoot to L.A. from there. And so, yeah, I was, I was up at four in the morning, like maybe off of four hours of sleep, just mm-hmm. like getting it. But that's those are the requirements. Like people, mm-hmm. you know, you want to be successful. You really want to like, you know, if, if you believe in yourself just a little bit, you know, you got to make sacrifices. Mm-hmm. And right now, like my sacrifice is like no rest. Like my body's taking a toll mm-hmm. on it. But it's like I'm also a big fan of finish what you started, though. Yes. I mean, finish what you started, you know, it's no growing and fuck it. There's no excuses. Like, let's let's grow with it. Like, if that means I can't spin the way I used to spin on other things, mm-hmm. then fuck it. I'm growing with this thing that I started because mm-hmm. that right there, you know, it has potential. Um, not only that, but it's, it's just the rules. You yeah. just, you know, I mean, uh, unless you, you back out, it's a calculated decision and, you know, everything is pointing at, you know, this is not like a good situation. Mm-hmm. Get up out of it. Then cool. You know, you make a smart move. Right. Nobody's going to you know criticize you for that. But like, if you just stop, 
or like you know you just like lose you know the fight or you got any kind of like outside occurrence that's influencing like you know uh negative you know vibes or anything mm-hmm. like what that has to do with your business you got to move the opposite direction mm-hmm you have to mm. like that's the only way you got to move the opposite direction and like that's why you know people always say oh I lost, you know you lose friends right people lose friends like oh you change like what the fuck i had to change dude yeah mm-hmm. like this shit is changing on me right. like mm-hmm. you know what i mean i heard that so much too yeah, yeah. i had a, a guy i've worked with for years slip into my dms today to tell me i'm going down a dangerous path because Ooh. i chose to interview tommy laren on the show mm-hmm. And I, I just like, as I looked at it, I was just like, again, it was just like, okay, carry on. And that's something <laughs> I feel like I've only just realized. I'm just going to throw out, I am mm-hmm. the youngest person here. And I feel like I look the oldest. <laughs> um, no. But uh, I never, ever subscribed to that ideology of like, let your body just get like ravaged for your success like just i never thought that there was like i used to watch my parents hate their fucking job Mm. like hate it and they'll fucking deny it like till they're blue in the face but i grew up with them (laughs) they were miserable like monday through friday like every single week and so i always was like no i'm never gonna get to that point where i'm that tired for my job and yeah, just th- in this year, <laughs> literally since the start of COVID. It's even harder. But, like, it just happens, though, doesn't it's it? Like, crazy. you just wake up at 5 o'clock one morning to, like, walk the dog or to drive to Visalia, which for some fucking reason, I've been there. I have no idea why. Right. It, I think I remember having a really nice dinner, though. Um you just wake up one day and it happens and i feel like there are so many people particularly in this town who wonder why they're not successful but they don't seem to have that same like intrinsic drive for what they do Mm -hmm. that all of the successful people i know have like this this motherfucker i text him this morning or rather you text me at like 10 30 being like hey sorry i'm like texting you back late like and i was just like no it's fucking fine like don't worry yes. about it because i know he's been up late i'm like what time did first question what time do you go to bed he's just like six <laughs> like, why seven <laughs> a.m and then you just woke up in three eat? hours like oh i'm up did you well, eat I, that was actually the the day before just because i was, rec- I was Christ, editing I'm all so the tired. podcasts <laughs> yeah and, and like that's the thing like yeah. i had to finish yeah, yeah. I, had to, yeah. I had to finish what i started because yeah I had two episodes mm-hmm. to upload on to Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And I had to edit both yeah. of them. And I said, okay, if I don't get it up, because the previous episode was for uh, this guy, Justin Park. His new songs came out yesterday. So oh, I'm, yeah. Shout I out said, to okay, Justin. I got to put out the podcast at the same time. Right. And, yeah, I had to do it. So, I mean, mm-hmm. uploading and, you know, converting, it took a while, but shit, if I didn't do it, then I wouldn't get the episode up at the same right. time. Mm-hmm. Right. This is hard work. I know people be like, oh, they live their life. They're in Hollywood. They get to go to the yeah. pool. and Man, but you're working damn near 24-7. Right. Yeah. Don't let it fool you. Yeah, this shit takes all <laughs> day. <laughs> Don't it let it fool all you. Day. All day. Don't let the palm trees yeah. fool you. Like, it's I'm, like we're not going to go hang out by the pool after this. Like, right. I'm sure you guys have places to go. I know, like, I have shit to do. Like, Maybe it's non fucking stop. Yeah. You know. Like, yeah, we, we try to get out of town once a month. But it's <laughs> like the purpose now is actually to find the place we want to go, like, mm-hmm. by land, mm-hmm. escape, right. yeah, it's, it's be a, bohemian. It's a two for one. Like, we're, oh, we're straight up. <laughs> right. Vacay, oh. and we're scouting. Mm-hmm. And we're getting out of the pollution, get to right. clear our lungs out mm-hmm. a bit. Yes. You know, it's great. Yes. But, uh, mandatory. Yeah. I don't know. Should we, uh, how long have we been at this? Oh, man. It's been an hour and 40 minutes. Jesus. Wow. This is the longest quick, huh? episode I think we've done. Really? Yeah. yeah. Sorry for being so long winded. No, no, it no. was really boring. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you chop it up, how long are the shows? I don't chop it up. It's raw. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If there's Pretty anything, much. we like yeah. it raw. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's a song I used to dance to back in the day that was like Ooh, that. Baby, I like it raw. Yeah. We'll probably uh, put us <laughs> Shout some, out to OG, put us some, ODB. Uh, ODB. <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably put us some clips, but uh, the full raw video, uh, yeah. unedited, will be on YouTube Dope. and Spotify and iTunes. Okay. Yeah. And before we wrap up, what do you guys want to plug? Let us yeah. know. Just go for it. Locals Equity Distro. San Francisco social equity distribution company 
that represents social equity brands, comprise the social equity brands, and we are taking advantage of social equity shelf space up and down the state of California. If you're an equity brand and you're, you're new, you're trying to get into the industry, hit us up. I'm, I can't promise you, you know, the world, but, you know, I can give you some advice or something at least um, point you in the right direction. But it's the movement. It's the movement. Social equity, locals equity, distro, Kingston Royal, SF Roots, Headstash. These are all my cohorts, all my partners in the industry. Um, and who else? I'm missing out somebody. Sanctuary Farms, Gifted Doja. But yeah. Why do I feel like I know Sanctuary um, Farms? K- Kingston Royal underscore? Kingston Royal underscore. For Instagram. On IG, yep. yep. Mm-hmm. And then Ron Brandon underscore. underscore yep. Right. But if, yeah, you guys can just scroll down to the, if you're yeah, we'll watching put, this, we'll everything will be in the bio. description. Sure, yeah. uh, Carlos, you got an Instagram? Yeah, uh, CJ Kustis, at CJ Kustis, yeah. How uh, do we spell uh, that? Uh, oh, CJ K-O-U-S-T-A-S. Okay, I'll put that in the description too. Cool. <laughs> um, but yeah. Anything uh, you want to plug? Uh, I mean, you know, just follow me, guys. I'm, I'm always creating content. We got to... Um, uh, uh, OTT platform uh, dropping. Uh, it's called Vibu. It's actually available on uh, um, what's that Roku right now? Oh Roku. shit! Um, nice. Um, yeah. So let's talk about uh, distribution as well. If you mm-hmm. do for the video, we could monetize. Um, so down. You know, and not just on YouTube. We could put it on our platform and figure out some ways to make more money yeah so always very interested always. yeah yeah but also totally. uh comedy you know check out laugh tracks mm-hmm. uh on all it's just hashtag it. it's everywhere it's viral. <laughs> laugh, laugh tracks laugh tracks, laugh tracks. Laugh tracks. l-a-f-f uh, laugh. uh it's, it's laugh mobs laugh tracks l-a-f-f-t-r-a-c-k yeah got it nice yeah. got it that's dope well i hope this isn't the first and last time i would love like yeah, anytime you guys are in town come back yeah, please I mean, well home. yeah we'll find some He's new human home. trafficking sites yes. <laughs> we're gonna we do a podcast like at the karaoke place oh i'm <laughs> so <laughs> this is all portable we just did um we just did an episode up in joshua tree so uh, i'm i'm down like, that's you know? a good idea that would be get some girls test this weed out you know Oh I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, go check out Kingston Royal for sure. See, I fucking forgot your handle already. Oh, of CJ your Kustis. Fucking weed. CJ, Kustis. CJ Kustis. Yes. Right. Fucking hell. Yeah, thank you guys for coming in, yeah. taking the time. Appreciate it. It's fucking a lot of laughs, <laughs> sure, a lot of knowledge. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you guys. Thank you guys. Mm-hmm. Thank you right. guys. Let's do it.